Hi everyone. Uh, today we're going to be talking about content creation. Now this is the big chunk of work that everybody thinks of when they're writing an open textbook. As we talk about all the time, there's a lot more to it than that, but it's still very important. Uh, so we're going to talk a little bit about the authoring process and some things to keep in mind when you are creating your content. There are a number of approaches to writing. You can take it on on your own and be a solo author. You can work with a small team who are each doing a few chapters each, or you can have a big team where you open it up if you choose. All of these are really great approaches and they'll work for different teams and different circumstances and they do all come with differences, a few advantages and disadvantages along the way. Obviously the first uh, ch difference is the amount of work that it will be for an individual person but often the work of writing is balanced with the work of managing a larger team and so there's also going to be more wrangling and things like that involved if you are working with more people. It's also a bit of a difference in terms of the motivation and accountability that you can get from people around you but others might prefer to do that uh, on their own and be more effective that way. And then the number of people involved in the writing will also impact the, the range of perspectives and the feedback available during the authoring process uh, before you get to stages of, say, more formal peer review. So in terms of process when you're working on the content for your book, it's important to have a detailed outline up front. You may have started this during your project scoping phase uh, and now's the chance to revisit it, think through, make sure you're all, the, all your authors understand what they're responsible for, what will be covered in other chapters so you can really keep those connections between them. And it's an important to have an author guide as well. There are a lot of decisions to make up front about things like citation styles, uh, whether to include images or not, and lots of little things like that about formatting that can be helpful to have in a guide that people can refer back to. Even if you're working on your own, you're going to need to make those decisions, so write them down so you can look back at them. And if you're working with a team, it can also be really helpful to have a chapter template or an example chapter that people can refer to so they know that what they're working on is going to deliver in the format and the style that you're expecting. And if you're working with a team as well, keep a tracking sheet. Uh, it's important to know where content is at at any given time, when it's expected in, so you can be sending reminders and things like that. You want to keep the communication going while people are writing. It can be quite a solitary act, but you should be thinking about making sure that documentation is available, asking and answering questions as they come up, uh, checking in with people to see how they're going, and even holding author calls and things like that to talk through the content so that people know that as they're working, they're getting immediate feedback as well as, you know, looking ahead to, to more formal kind of feedback like peer review. Then the other things to think about with content itself are making sure you're clear on your audience and you're writing really dedicated content for them. Uh, making sure you're considering accessibility and inclusive design up front. How you can make your content modular and adaptable. This is an open resource so people will be using it in different ways and wanting to combine it and, and rework it. Uh, so there are some work you can do up front to make that easier for people in the long run. You can do some work to make your life easier as well. So think about things like if you want a glossary or an index in the long run, what can you be doing while you're writing to set yourself up for that and identifying certain terms. Uh, and remember, content creation can be iterative as well. You don't have to put out the most expensive version of a chapter as its first cut. You can address, say, the theory section first and expect that you'll add case studies later or something like that. You really can take the time to improve and adapt over time uh, as you need to. And then the last thing is to make it fun. This is an exciting part of the process and it's a creative one as well. And so making sure that you and your team are enjoying it is important too, that you get to think about you know, these subjects that you know so well, consider how students are going to be reacting to them, what you want them to know, how you want to approach it. All of that can be really enjoyable too. So uh, make sure that you keep that in mind along the way as well.